And today we're very happy to have Tom Braden from UMass Amherst and the IAS. And he will be talking to us about Gaze Core Essential Sheaves. Take it away. Okay, um, thanks a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, so as I was saying, the, 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 this, this is a, a class of perverse sheaves that I, I sort of, I, I, I knew about in principle, but had never thought about sort of in, in much detail. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to sort of spend a little time thinking a little more detail, a little, a little more detail than I had before. Um, I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to, this is not going to be an incredibly deep talk. I'm going to sort of try to introduce the basic, the basic objects. And uh, I believe they're going to feed into the main construction that's going on in the series of talks. So um, I was sort of told I have to get minimum introduce the, the, the sheaves and the uh, monodromy automorphism. On. Okay. So, um, to start with, I'm just going to uh, have a brief review of the uh, affine Hecke algebra, um, which is which is then categor the, then the the result about the center of the affine Hecke algebra is categorified by uh, gauge coordinate construction. So um, yeah, so just some standard notation. If we start with a reductive group and we have the uh, um, root lattice and the, the, the weight lattice and, and the roots and the co-weight lattice and the co-roots. Um, uh, for for us, the affine Hecke, uh, the, the affine wild group is going to be on the on the uh, uh, co weight side. So it's the the lattice, the the the, the additive lattice of co weights, uh, semi direct product with the finite um, reflection group generated by the reflections in, in the roots, um, and it will act on the uh, well the real version of the of the uh, weight space, co the, the co weight space. And um, so, I mean, there, there, there's, there's part, part of this that's a, a, that's a, a Coxeter group, a reflection group uh, generated by reflections in the, in the uh, fundamental alcove. Um, but if, uh, depending on whether your group is simply connected or not, um, if the, if the uh, co-weight lattice is bigger, is, is bigger than spanned by the, by, by the, by the co-roots, then there may be also a, a small finite group of Automorphisms of the of the alcove itself. Um, it's not really important. That has to do with the uh, uh, connected components of the uh, uh, affine Grassmannian and affine flag variety. But um, I mean, if you want to think of this as being a, a Coxeter group generated by reflections, that's fine. Um, nothing massively will change except one of the examples when I do GLN doesn't quite work that way. So. Um, Okay, and there's a length function on this, which is which is you 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 act on this fundamental alcove and see how far away in terms of how many how many of these hyperplanes uh, separate uh, is the, the start the start from the finish. Um, and again, because there's a, there might be a small finite group that just shuffles the fundamental alcove around, there might be a small a small set uh, where the length is zero, but um, uh, which is you know not not standard for Coxeter groups, but. Um, again, it won't, it, it, won't, it won't cause significant changes to what I'm going to say. Okay, so, um, and, then, and then from this in a standard way, you can build the Hecke algebra, which is a, a, a free algebra over the uh, Laurent polynomials with a basis, one basis element for each element of the, of the uh, affine uh, vial group. Um, and the uh, multiplication is, is uh, hx times H, uh, hy is h of xy if the lengths add and and then and then there's uh for for a simple reflection i should say this yeah this is for 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 uh s in uh a, a simple reflection uh then then you have this the, uh this uh, quadratic relation um and you know so 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 so, so th this mu th this much of it is is you know, completely standard for for finite uh, for finite uh, vial groups and and uh, and hyperbolic uh, and, and hy hyperbolic Coxeter groups. It, 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 there, there, there's no difference here. But the special thing in the uh, in the affine case is this large commutative subalgebra, uh, which is which is generated by translations. So if you have translations uh, by elements, th those are elements of the of the affine vial group. And you can produce sort of special elements of the Hecke algebra by um, well, if you're if you're dominant, you just take the corresponding basis element. But if you're anti-dominant, you want to take the inverse of the basis element, and then uh, and then it turns out if you if you're if you're a difference of two dominant elements, then you can uh, you can 
write it as, as one base element times the inverse of the other. And this, this turned out to be independent of the choice of representation of, of your, of your, um, of your uh, co-weight as a difference of, of, of two dominant ones. Uh, okay. So, um, so, 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 so th 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 this, uh, and, 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 and the basic property of this is that, is that this is additive h of lambda times h of lambda prime is h of lambda plus lambda prime. Uh, so it, it, it forms this large, large uh, commutative subalgebra. And it turns out that if you then just look at the, uh, the invariant part under the finite vowel group uh, of this, uh, then that actually uh, forms the center of the, of the entire heck algebra. So, so if you just take, uh, yeah, if you, if, you, if you just take the, the uh, a basis given by uh, h of w lambda, where lambda is is, is some some orbit, then uh, then then th those will give you a basis uh, in the uh, in the Heck algebra. Now these elements can also be viewed, or or th these th the span of these elements can also be viewed as being given by um, the span of of uh, um, well, essentially, the the Sataki elements in uh, coming from the the uh, representation of, of the dual group, and uh, and so this the, the, this is what uh, Gates Gory wanted to to sort of categorify to to, to turn turn into uh, geometry of sheets. Okay, so stop me any point. I'm I'm yeah. I, 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 in, in in some cases, I'm I'm not an expert on this, but I'm happy to if I, if I've said something incorrect or or unclear uh, to sort of. Uh, either try to fix it or, or ask somebody else to fix it for me. Okay, so we're going to lift this uh, following gate square. We're going we're to lift this uh, description of the center to, to a description of, of some particularly interesting perverse sheaves. Um, so the geometry we're going to look at is the geometry of the uh, affine Grassmanni and the affine flag variety. So, um, and you can do this either over uh, over a finite field or over C. Um, I'm a topologist, so, so the examples I'm going to do are going to be over C, and I'm not going to say the magic words involving l adic cohomology and so on that you need to, to, to do it uh, um, over finite fields. But yeah, if you know how to do that, it, it, it's, there, there are no major, major differences. Um, so, so, so you take, you, you take the, um, the affine Grassmannian, which is uh, the group with values in the, in the uh, 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 Laurent series um, and divided by groups uh, divided by elements which which are um, uh, and defined at zero basically so the Laurent polynomials and uh, and then the affine flag variety is a slightly bigger thing where instead of modding out by by G of O you're going to mod out by the Iwahori which is the inverse image you evaluate uh, you evaluate these uh, um, uh, elements of G of O, you evaluate them at zero when it gets given you an element of G and you want to look at the, the ones that land in, in the Burrell. Um, and so what you get is a, is a, is a, um, a fiber bundle with fibers, uh, the finite flag variety G mod B. Okay, and, and so, and, and so the, these two geometries, you know, are, are uh, categorify, are, are, are sort of, you know, uh, geometric analogs of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, algebra as we've been talking about. So the uh, if you take I equivariant sheaves on on the flag variety, or if you're doing over finite over finite fields, you can you can look at just I and I and I invariant functions and, and do it on, on the functions level. But uh, but there's a convolution operation either on sheaves or, or on functions, uh, which will give you the, which will produce the affine heck algebra. Uh, if you do sheaves, you need to use mixed sheaves in order to get the in order to get the, the parameter V out of it. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time worrying about the mixed structure on this. Um, if, you, if you just categorize the, categorify the sheaves by themselves, you're going to get the, the group algebra of the of the of the uh, affine vial group. But um, uh, but if you take if you take the the Grassmannian GER and take G of O equivariant sheaves, you you again have a convolution because it's 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 mod G of O on the right and G of O equivariant on the left. Um, and uh, and then you'll get an, a, a commutative algebra, which is the spherical Hecke algebra, um, which can be identified with the uh, the center of the affine Hecke algebra, as we um, as we've talked. So 
Gates Corey took this and said, well, if you're talking about, you know, sheaves on the Grassmannian, uh, geovoic or sheaves on the Grassmannian being the center, uh, there should be a map into uh, Iwahori equivariant sheaves on the flag variety. And he produced this and the, the quick version of the, 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 the statement of the, of the theorem is that he constructed a functor uh, from, yeah, from geovoic equivariant sheaves on the Grassmannian, affine Grassmannian to Iwahori equivariant sheaves on the, on the flag variety. And here are the main properties. Um, the first is if you take uh, if you take a, a perverse sheaf on the Grassmannian and map it by this by this um, functor z, when you convolve it with a perverse sheaf, uh, an i equivariant perverse sheaf on the flag variety, you get again an i equivariant perverse sheaf on the flag variety, which is unexpected in general because. The, there is a convolution on perverse sheaves on the flag variety, but unlike the Grassmannian case, uh, they don't send perverse sheaf to uh, convolve with perverse sheaf to a perverse sheaf. So, so the, 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 this already says this is a very special class of perverse sheaves. When you convolve with it, uh, it, it, it sends perverse sheaves to perverse sheaves. Um, and the second property is where the central central property comes in, which is that uh, these properties that, that these uh, Z of S sheaves, when you convolve with them, it doesn't matter which side you convolve with them on. Um, there's, there's, a, a, and there's a canonical isomorphism. There's, there's a sort of functorial isomorphism between them. Um, and so uh, th this, this would already tell you that in the, in, you know, if you look at their K classes, they will live in the center of, of the heck algebra. Um, and, and, and the third property is that if you push them forward from the flag variety down to the, uh, Grassmannian, you get the sheaf back again. So you can think of Z of S as sort of exploding the sheaf S into a sheaf on the affine flag variety because there, there, um, there are many, there, there's sort of more strata, of, there, there's a whole flight G of B mods worth of strata lying above it, uh, above a stratum in, in the Grassmannian and it sort of spreads out the sheaf in some, in some kind of sophisticated way. Um, so to be really, to be really precise here, um, S is G of O equivariant. When you push it down, it's going to only remain I equivariant. So it's 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 well, you really need to forget the I. You need to do, need to forget the uh, G of O equivariant structure. Restrict the structure bet down to I to um, for that to be a, a literally true statement. Um, and the last statement is that is that it, it actually is is a uh, is sort of a, sort of a tensor functor because it's also a convolution on the Grassmannian, and and if you convolve to uh, uh, perverse sheaves on the Grassmannian, well, uh, be, you know, the Grassmannian has a nice property that perverse convolve with perverse is perverse. So you can apply Z to it and, and it, it sort of uh, commutes with, with convolution. Okay. Um, but uh, one important thing is that this, this perverse sheaf is, ex is, is actually extremely complicated as, as a perverse sheaf. If you look at its simple constituents, it's very far from being semi-simple. Um, you know, unlike many of the other constructions like convolution where, where, you, where um, at least, at least say, say in characteristic zero coefficients, uh, simple tensor, simple convolved with simple would be simple in the, in the Satake setting, for example. Um, so there's a lot of internal structure. And so far as I know, I mean, there, there, there's, there, there's not really a complete description of, of how these things are. There's some decompositions into um, uh, some some other interesting sheaves, uh, these Wakamoto Wakamoto sheaves, and so on. But I, I don't think, in particular, I don't think things like endomorphisms or so on are, are understood. They, they they feel to me the examples I've looked at approximately as complicated as you know projectives and and uh, tiltings in finite category O uh, kind of things. They have lots and lots of constituents, but I don't I don't know that their their complete structure has been understood. If someone else is an, is more of an expert, I'd really I'd love to hear. Uh, what else is known about these things? Any questions? Can I uh, just a matter of notation? So the PI of FL was all perverse sheets, correct? And not just the semi-simple ones? Uh, correct. That's correct. Yeah. And so the, um, but the, so the functor pi lower star, uh, which goes in the other direction, does not respect convolution or what's going on with convolution? Uh, I don't think it does, but if somebody sh can, I mean, that would make a map the wrong way around, uh, from the, isn't it, from the full, 
from the full affinate algebra to the spherical, so you wouldn't expect. Oh, no, no, uh, wait. Uh, yeah, that would. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, there's a question of equivalence there. Uh, yeah, it's not, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's, it's not, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think. I think it may. It may. Rep, it may. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, may, 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 maybe in the discussion, somebody can uh, fill in the correct statement to make there. Um, okay. So, um, so what I want to talk about is is you know how you construct these sheaves and the basic the basic uh, the quick quick you know. Uh, Cliff's notes version of what it, what you're going to do is apply nearby cycles functor to a family uh, a, a, a global version of the affine flag variety, which is a family over over a smooth curve whose fibers are well the, the fiber over one point is the affine flag variety, and the fiber of the other other, other point is uh, uh, over a general point is the Grassmannian times uh, times the finite flag variety. And my monitor is crapping out, but I think I, yeah. I think it's okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so, okay, so, so, so th 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 this is the sort of, um, uh, moduli interpretation of, of affine flag varieties and Grassmannians. Um, so, um, although we don't have to go full, full stacky version of this. So, so to begin with, um, I want to talk about the, um, okay, so actually, first of all, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about this curve just being a one, with with a, with a, with a, a, a standard choice of global coordinate t. Um, so that just makes things a lot simpler to say. I'll say in a couple of places what you need to do to do this in general. But in order to construct the functor, this is perfectly good enough. So um, so I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna fuss about it too much. But you can read the paper if you want like lots more details. Um, so. Uh, so, I mean, first is a global version of the Grassmannian, which is uh, topologically very simple, um, but but the construction is is sort of gives you the flavor. So, what you're going to say is that the 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 global affine Grassmannian for each point y in X, you're going to look at a, a a principal G bundle over 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 the curve, and you're going to take a, a a trivialization of that bundle, so a map from the principal bundle, the chosen principal bundle, to the trivial bundle. Which is just which is just uh, you know x times g, uh, which is defined over the the curve minus the chosen point. So you're doing a reparameterization, which is not required to be an isomorphism at y, and uh, um, up up to isomorphism where you're allowed to uh, you know choose an isomorphism of p basically. Um, okay, so to be fancy, I mean so so really what you want to do is talk about uh, a, this is as a scheme which is represented by some some functor from Test schemes to sets, and what you so instead of talking about a point in X, you talk about a map Y from your test scheme to X, and and then your P bundle would your your, your principal bundle would actually be a bundle over X times S, and uh, and then you'd be choosing a, a trivialization on X times X minus the graph of, of of your of your point of your function Y, um, but I so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna suppress that. Uh, that nature for the rest of the talk and just talk about it as if I was just talking about a set of points. But if you really want to talk about a scheme structure, that that's that's what you have to do. Uh, and then there's you know various things to check that that those you know are make sense and are representable in all the places you want them to be and so on. Okay. So 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 the basic picture is again you have this uh, uh, principal bundle and the trivial principal bundle and you're choosing an identification of one with the other, but it's allowed to be, uh, it, it's not defined at your chosen point Y. And the reason this produces the affine Grassmannian is, uh, so you, know, you can choose a trivialization of this principal bundle over a formal neighborhood of Y. And that trivialization combined with the given trivialization beta um, gives you a, well, it gives you a change of coordinates on the uh, on the trivial bundle on the um, on the punctured disk because 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 uh, beta is not defined at zero, so not defined at y, and so that gives you an element of, of g of k, but that's defined up to changing your choice of coordinates on p 
And changing that is exactly transforming by, by G of O. So, so it, that exactly gives you, for a fixed Y, that gives you a copy of the affine gross money. And because I'm choosing a fixed global coordinate T here, all of the fibers normal. So, so without choosing a fixed coordinate, you get in, in principle, a different affine Grassmannian over each point, which is represented by the local, you know, local coordinates at that point. And, but because I'm choosing a fixed local coordinate, each of these uh, copies of the affine Grassmannian over each point are canonically identified with each other. And so it really, in this case, just becomes uh, a, a trivial bundle of Grassmannian times X. Now, if you want to do this over a, over a general curve or you don't want to choose this coordinate advance, uh, what you want to say is that uh, this GER X is, a, um, is, a, is a, a fiber bundle with structure group uh, ought of the, of the formal disk. And, uh, and then if you say, yeah, and, and then if you just sort of work that through carefully, uh, then, then you have the, the correct setting in which to do this. And so in particular, when you want to take sheaves, you, you need your sheaves to be ought disk invariant, equivariant in order to, in order to make these constructions work. But I'm, I'm sweeping all that under the rug. So um, I, won't, I won't write that any of the slides and I won't say it from now on. Any questions? Okay, so um, so now we look at the at the the flag variety version of this, and so uh, so the definition that Gates Gore gave is uh, the the flag variety again. I, the, the, these are basically the points, and, and you'd want to do you know, you know uh, maps from a test scheme in order to to write what he wrote. But um, so the 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 beginning part is is the same as affine Grassmannian, and then what you add is a reduction of the fiber of P over zero. To, to the Borel, which is basically a choice of a flag in, in uh, a choice of a point in the flag variety. Um, and so what the important the important point here is that I, I'm I'm the the reduction to B that I'm choosing here is not at Y. It's at it's at a fixed point zero. I, I mean, you choose any fixed point X, but since I'm choosing a one, I'm just going to choose zero for my for my choice here. Um, and so you'll get different behavior when Y is equal to zero and when Y is not equal to zero. Uh, and, and, and the first thing that, that, that before you get into the, the, the different behavior at, at zero and not at zero, is that for every point, uh, you're just adding an extra choice of essentially a, G, a, a point in G mod B. Um, so, uh, so you get a bundle with G mod B fibers over, over this uh, global gross money. Um, now, if, if your Y is not your, your chosen point, then you're choosing this. Uh, uh, trivialization of P uh, that's allowed to be non-trivial that, that's allowed to be not be de defined at Y, but your B reduction is a different as a, a different point. So your trivialization is defined at zero, and that means that P at zero uh, is identified with the trivial with the trivial bundle at zero by this beta, and so for all Y not equal to zero, uh, the fibers of this forgetful map are canonically identified. With G mod B, and so uh, the 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 um, this global flag variety away from zero is just the global Grassmannian times G mod B, uh, and 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 that and that's honestly on the nose. I don't even have to worry about this uh, uh, ought D uh, principal bundle or whatever. It really is actually times G mod B, and in this case, because they have this T this global coordinate T, it's Grassmannian times the punctured curve times G mod B. Okay, but if you look at the fiber at zero, um, now things things are different because I don't, I can't identify the fiber at zero with when Y is equal to zero, I can't identify the fiber at zero of P with the fiber at zero of the trivial bundle because my, uh, my beta is not defined at zero. And now if I change the trivialization at P uh, of P, uh, on this disk around uh, around y, that's also going to change the uh, it's going to change the the reduct the b reduction, and so in order to be uh, in order to take this uh, quotient up to isomorphism, you can only do that if the b reduction stays put, which in effect means that 
you're only going to take the quotient by Iwahori elements rather than all of G of O. So the fiber over, over zero is the, is the affine flag variety. So what you've defined is a, a family whose general, general fiber is GER times G mod B and whose special fiber is, is the affine flag variety. So each of them is a G mod B uh, bundle over, over GER, but you, uh, you have the trivial bundle generally and, and, the, and the, you know, the, flag, the flag bundle at the special point. Any questions? Uh, this this chat. It's I'm, my my um, monitor. I'm looking at my laptop because my big monitor just stopped working, and now I can't watch the chat. So if there's somebody, uh, you should always ignore the chat. Hmm? Okay. If, if if people are going to answer the question, yeah. If, if something comes up that, that they want me to uh, talk about, I I will uh, yeah to shout it out. Okay. Um, Okay, so 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 here here's gate scores functor uh, writ written using this global coordinate t. So um, uh, so if you take uh, if you take this g of o equivariant sheaf on the Grassmannian S, I'm gonna, I'm going to um, well stretch it out over the curve by by uh, taking the product with with the constant sheaf on x minus zero. And then I'll and then for the G mod B factor, I'm going to take the unit perverse sheaf supported at the point. So the, the sort of the sort of identity element in the in the convolution category of perverse sheaves on on, on G mod B. Now in gen, in the general case where you don't choose a coordinate, what you do is you take this S and you fatten it up by using this uh, by using this uh, uh, bundle structure, uh, this ought ought uh, ought disk bundle structure. To get it to get a, a bundle on uh, to get a, a sheaf on the uh, on GUR-X. Um, but yeah, but, the, but that that's that's essentially what's going on. Uh, and and then what you apply is the nearby cycles functor for the projection map to the to the curve X. Um, and I, I'm gonna say more I'm gonna say more detail what uh, you know talk about nearby cycles functor for people who haven't thought about it much. Um, but in but in general, what it does is it takes sheaves defined away from Away from the zero to sheaves on the fiber over zero. Um, okay, so so um, basic property of nearby cycles is it's going to commute with push forward, or well, strictly speaking, seeking proper push forward. But these sheaves or these sheaves have proper support. I mean, the, the varieties themselves are, are are you know in schemes, but they're in proper, and the and the sheaves that we're looking at are, are supported on on. Uh, you know, on, on, on proper varieties. So, um, so, uh, so it's, it's going to commute with push forward. And so that, and, and so that, that's what gives you the property. If you push forward from the flag to, to, to the Grassmannian. Um, so the, uh, yeah, so, so, if, so if, I, if I push it forward, well, the, the Grassmannian is a trivial, is a trivial family. So, so the, um, the nearby cycles for the Grassmannian itself is, is just the identity functor because, it, because it's just GER times X. Um, and so when I push it forward, uh, I, I just, I'm just taking nearby cycles for, for a sort of trivial family, which gives you the identity functor, which is what gives you the, uh, um, the fact that pi lower star of, of, of Z is, is the identity. Um, the second remark is about equivariance. So, uh, okay, so, and, and, and this should definitely, if you're not choosing the global coordinate, should be said much more carefully than this. But if you, if you look, uh, instead of looking at, at uh, G uh, evaluated in, in power series. If you look at actually polynomials, and that will act globally on on this uh, flag variety by by actually changing parameters globally on on this um, principal bundle. Uh, but so the, the if if you want to look at the the action on this G mod B fiber over a non-zero point, what it ends up being is by evaluation of of uh, of this polynomial valued element of G at zero. And if you if but if you want to be equivariant to not mess this this point sheaf around, you need that element to be in B. And so you start out with something the G of O equivariant, but once you take this nearby cycles, uh, the the way the way uh, uh, the way G of K of of, of T is going to act on this, you can't act by all of that 
and, and have stay equivariant. So you end up with I, I, I equivariant cheese. Okay, so that that that's somewhat sketchy, and and yeah, and, and to say this really carefully without choosing a a, a, a fixed choice of coordinate and so on, um, it, it's uh, it, it takes a bit more a bit more um, machinery, but it, but I think that that's a, that's the essential idea. Any questions? Okay, this might be a good yeah. I I, I guess the, 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 this is a good place to stop if you want to take a break here. Um, okay, great. So we'll take a five minute break. Let's meet back around 3.36. Maybe I'll use this uh, two minutes to make a historical comment that uh, the idea was, I think, also can be eventually traced to IS. I think it was the idea, or uh, actually, initial idea belonged to Bellinson and to Danis worked it out. But uh, Bellinson, I think I remember a conversation that Bellinson, when he was kind of um, Raise this question and work out this or two example with Picard Ashes that maybe mm -hmm. I'm gonna explain and then uh, but then later he realized that you know discovered the idea of a construction after um, uh, conversation with Kotwitz about local model of Shimura varieties. So you know right, yeah, I, I, re I read that yeah, Kot Kotwitz and Haynes and so, had had some of the at least some of the conjectured construction in this other context. Right, right. And I guess the, some of the technical questions are harder there. And so it's kind of not, um, 
it's not like this is parallel to some known construction there because they're kind of in mixed characteristic case, you know, it's not as easy to take yeah, by cycles, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the basic idea came from there. Yeah. But he talked to me uh, initially, Benson, like mentioned this uh, example of like the current left shots, and you know, I tried to compute things by hand in the next case, but mm -hmm. that's not, I didn't su succeed. No, yeah. Didn't. Well, they're hard to compute. There's one question in the chat. Uh, does this proof at all use the global definitions of uh, GER and FLU? Uh, proof of what? I, I mean, I haven't I haven't described gate squares proof, and and I, I mean, the, the, you know, to prove those properties, you need quite a bit more. Um, I mean, it's it's of the same nature, but you need to you need to define a global version of the convolution, uh, the convolution variety for the for flags, uh, and 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 then manipulate them in, in several clever ways. So um, actually the two different convolution, the two different global versions of the convolution, depending on whether you're doing the left version or the right version of, of uh, convolution with Z of S. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 I decided I'm not going to try to describe the proof in the rest of the, the rest of the talk. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, but the global nature of these things is, is really essential. But I mean, it's, 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 it's essential to define the, the map, the, the, the functor in the first place, because you need this family and this family can't be described over the, over the well, I mean, it, I guess in, in principle, it could be described over, over, the, over the formal disk, but then nearby cycles, maybe, maybe in finite characteristic, but it, topologically, I don't know how to talk about near, nearby cycles over formal, formal neighborhood. But, um, But definitely the the the, the sort of um, uh, balance balance and Drinsfeld version of 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 uh, it's, instead of doing convolution of doing nearby cycles for pairs of of points uh, comes into play in in this um, in the proof in in, in in a fundamental way. Okay, great. I think we should start the second part. Okay, so um, so for the second part of the talk, um, what I want to do is talk um, about nearby cycles and do an example. And to, it, it, not not what I'll say was is not going to be entirely precise in every in every circumstance, and um, also not incredibly sophisticated. But what I want to do is give you some flavor of intuition about what these sheaves look like, in a sense. Okay, uh, so to begin with, uh, here, so so. Uh, Nearby cycles is a functor which takes, uh, uh, well, you, you have a family uh, uh, f uh, of, of making making uh, y a family of, over 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 the line, and, and in this case, I'm going to be doing I'm going to be doing a topological version, so I'm only going to talk about about uh, c um, uh, varieties over c here. Um, so so you take a map a map to c. And what you do is you take uh, you take you remove the point zero and take the universal cover of that. So you blow up the, the line and take the fiber product of that with y. So you blow up y according to uh, according to what its what its non-zero value is uh, under f. And uh, and and the, uh, you know one quick and dirty definition of this is you take your sheaf on y uh, and you pull it back and push it forward and then and then restrict to zero. And this this only this doesn't depend on this only depends on what happens uh, away from zero because p uh, because because y tilde only lives over over non-zero elements, um, and and one way of thinking about what this is doing is I mean ju just imagine for example that f is is uh, that y is c and f is the identity. Um, if you have a, a local system on on uh, on y minus zero, on, on c minus zero, well, um, you, you want your nearby cycles to, to take 
you know, a, 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 a stock at a, at a general point and, and just give you that. Whereas if you take cohomology of this local, uh, uh, if you take cohomology around zero of this local system, if the local system is not trivial, you get you, 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 you get the wrong thing. And so by, um, by taking this universal cover or, or pulling back by this universal cover, um, you, you now get something where when you take cohomology, you're, instead, of, instead of taking the cohomology of the circle with value in this local system, you stretch the circle out to a line. And now the cohomology along that line is identified with the stock at, at every point. Um, and so then you push it forward and pull it back and, and you get exactly this sort of something that's identified with, this, with the cohomology at a, at a, at a general point. Um, so so that, that's if, 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 if Y is actually C, if, if you're just taking you know, uh, uh, an a, a, a identity map for the F. But in general, you can, you can sort of think that way but uh, what you can think of is, is this is roughly speaking the push forward by some map from the general fiber at a nearby point. So, so you know, there might be other, other special fibers at other values than, than, than zero, but you just take epsilon close enough that all the, all the fibers near, near but not equal to zero ha have the same topological type. And, uh, and you want to think of a map that's sort of degenerating this fiber at epsilon down to this. And it's roughly speaking the, the, um, the push forward by this highly non-algebraic map. Um, and uh, and, and, and this, this can actually be made precise. Goreski and McPherson constructed such a map uh, using some stratification theory. It's not unique, but it's unique up to some, some isotopy. I don't remember the exact technical details. But because of because it involves choosing a stratification that's that's compatible with F and doing sort of stratum by stratum constructions, um, it's not something that you can actually compute with in more than the very simplest examples. So if they're two strata, you can probably do it. But beyond that, um, it's sort of nice to know what exists theoretically, but I don't know that it's it's really that helpful. Um, but the important formal properties. Uh, well, first of all, as I said, uh, it, you, it doesn't matter what happens at Y0 when you take nearby cycles because you've just uh, gotten rid of it when you pull back uh, to this Y tilde. Um, it's going to commute with, uh, with duality and proper push forwards. Um, and uh, what uh, a very unexpected property that, that, that's, that's very deep is that, uh, well, up to a shift, it's, it's T exact. So it sends perverse sheaves to perverse sheaves. Um, and the shift is just because the, the dimension of your, of your space is changing. You, you're going from Y to down to Y zero. So, so, um, so you have to take a shift to, to preserve perversity. Um, and, and the last, uh, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say anything about why that's true, but, but it is true and, and you'll see it in, in, in some examples. Um, uh, but uh, the, the, the last formal property I wanna talk about is uh, that, you can take this epsilon and send it around the origin. Uh, there's a monodromy coming from pi one of, of, of C minus zero, and this monodromy exists on the nearby cycles on the sheaf level. Um, so so there, there exists a, um, a sort of functorial, uh, a functorial automorphism of this nearby cycles functor um, uh, that, that you, you, you can see because there's a translation operator on this Y tilde, um, just pushing forward from one to the one, one copy of the fiber to another copy of the fiber, you know, by an integer, and uh, and if you if you push forward by that while you're doing this operation, you get you get this automorphism. Okay, any questions? Um, is it obvious why mu is like or when mu is nilpotent? Um, no, I mean it depends on what your sheaf is. Um, I, I, well, well, so 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 it, it's it's. Uh, yeah, the nice situation is it's going to be unipotent, and um, that you know it depends. I mean, if you took a local system with a non-unipotent monodromy, the monodrom, the, the, like in that case where f is is the, is the isomorphism is 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 the identity, um, mu is just the uh, is the monodromy of your local system, or or if, if it's not a local, if it's if it's a uh, derived category object with things in different degrees, it's the mon it's the sort of monodromy of that of that map. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, geometrically, it's sort of it's the nicest situations when it's unipotent, but uh, and it will be. Uh, actually, one thing I forgot to write in the slides is that Gates score proved that the the monodromy is is unipotent for uh, for for these sheaves. But maybe if you start with like an, 
uh, minimal extension of a constant shift, then it will be quasi unipotent, right? Of x, p, s. That's what Georgia holds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, so now I want to talk about uh, this this basic example, which I think is the basic example that everyone does because it's it's sort of the one case where it's uh, large enough to have non-trivial behavior, but small enough that you can actually write it out in coordinates and compute the, the sheaf completely. Um, so I'm going to take uh, and this is the example in Gage Corey's paper, and yeah, sort of everybody does this this, this example. I'm going to take G is is GL two. Um, and and for for GL for GLN in general, you can replace this modular picture with with the principal bundles and replace the principal bundles with vector bundles, um, uh, with the associated vector bundles by the by the the natural representation in this case of G on on C two. So you get rank two vector bundles instead of rank two instead of uh, G principal bundles, um, and then your your trivialization becomes you know, a trivialization of the corresponding vector bundles. In other words, a meromorphic map, which is invertible away from your chosen point. Uh, and this is why, okay. Um, away from your chosen point, why? Um, and then if you wanted to sort of make this algebraic, you, you take the global sections of E and, uh, and push that forward by your trivialization, you get a lattice of, uh, sort of it, a lattice of meromorphic sections of of E trivial, which is just um, you know the 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 fraction the two copies of the fraction field of 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 the line, uh, and 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 the lattice that you get has a property that it becomes isomorphic to the trivial lattice uh, after you invert t minus y. So that, that that's a way of saying that it's supported at t minus y. Um, and now we're going to look at a particular Schubert variety in this in this global Grassmannian, uh, which is the one under Sataki, which corresponds to the to the natural two dimensional representation of the dual group, which is also G GL two. Um, and so this will be a a, a P one basically, but the global version of it is simply uh, lattices contained in the trivial lattice, so contained in in uh, C of T direct sum C of T uh, with uh, um, co-dimension one, basically. Uh, and now at this point, if, if I describe it this way, I no longer need to, to describe the point Y because this is one dimensional. Uh, the quotient is going to be, the quotient of, uh, of L, the trivial by L is going to be uh, one dimensional. So it's supported at a single point, which is the point Y. So, uh, so one of the advantages of this for this particular small example is that I don't have to mess around with, with Y separately. Okay, so um, so 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 this this Ger lambda, which is this this uh, sort of global Schubert variety, in this case is just a trivial uh, P one bundle over over X. Um, uh, but it's 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 not it's not hard to see that basically be, basically because you can translate um, you can translate uh, your coordinate t to t minus y and and everything works exactly uh, exactly the same. Okay, so so then then we have this upstairs. We have this flag variety version, sort of sitting over the same thing, over the same uh, 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 Schubert variety in the Grassmannian. So I'm still going to have uh, the lattice contained in L triv with the same property here, and then I'm going to choose a uh, reduction uh, a, a reduction of the structure group over the over the point. Well, what that is 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 in the vector bundle setting is a is a flag. In the in the fiber of the vector bundle over zero, and in terms of the lattice, that's just L mod T L. So uh, so what I'm doing is choosing a one dimensional subspace of L mod T L, which is two dimensional. Okay, and uh, and then if I want to figure out so so, but what I'm interested in is not uh, is not this whole space, but I'm interested in the space which away from zero. Uh, where it's GER times G mod B, which is GER times P1, I want to fix a point in that P1, which is the, the, the B mod B. And, uh, and so that map is given by taking my, my element L. And well, this is the fiber, you can actually write this. So, so you know, th 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 this is the fiber of E at zero, and this is the fiber of E triv at zero. 
And because I'm, so, so I'm looking over X minus zero. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm for the moment assuming that, that, that this is supported not at zero, but at some other point, um, this map here will be an isomorphism. At zero, it will not be, but, but away from zero, this will be an isomorphism. And so I'm just asking this, this, this one dimensional space here to, uh, well, to, to, to be, um, to go to zero when I project down away from, uh, when I project down on the second factor. <clears throat> okay, so, um, so now I can write really explicit local coordinates and there are several different coordinate patches, but I, what I'm writing down here is the, the one where the interesting thing happens. So you, you have to look at, at, you know, at, at different, fixed, different torus fixed points and see which one, uh, which one is gonna have the interesting, the interesting behavior. But it turns out that if I take my lattice to be, uh, well, so uh, I, I'm looking at a neighborhood of the lattice span by one zero and zero T. And, and to get a, a neighborhood of that, you take one A and zero T minus Y, where again, Y is the parameter on the, on the curve X. Um, and my L is going to be a, a, a linear combination of the two of the two basis vectors, the, these are basis vectors of L mod T L. Um, but I want I but I want to take uh, I want to take in a neighborhood of the one spanned by just the second basis vector. So I'll take it, I'll take the subspace spanned by the, the, the second basis vector and a constant times the first. And now if you look at this map, uh, well, L is going to be in the second coordinate, it's going to have C A uh, plus T minus Y. But I'm modding out by t, so I just get c a minus y. And in order, in order, so in order to be in the subvariety, I need c a minus y to be equal to zero. And you see now that you get different behavior exactly when y is zero and y when y is not zero. Okay. Uh, and so the variety in this in this local neighborhood, there's a completion off an infinity. The, 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 instead of being an affine picture, there, there's a you know there, there's points at infinity, but but the interesting behavior for the nearby cycles happens in the, in this patch. Um, so when y is equal to zero, I get two lines that you know a times c equals zero, and when y is equal to some non-zero epsilon, you get a times c is equal to epsilon, which is which is a, a smooth curve. So you're taking a, degener a de de uh, degeneration of this uh, smooth curve to this uh, union of two lines. Uh, now, topologically, uh, the union of two lines can be drawn as this cone where the bottom, th 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 this is a real picture, the bottom, co the bottom cone, although you know, not, not geometrically, but topologically, is th this is a copy of, of C, and this is another copy of C joined at a point. And the nearby fiber is, well, it's just a tube, topologically, it's a C star. And the, the sort of degeneration map, the sigma that I want to take, is uh, can be described uh, as taking a neighborhood sort of band around near zero uh, uh, and sending all that, collapsing all that to the central point, and then everything else can naturally, once you collapse this to a point, it's it's homeomorphic to this uh, to this blue cone, and and you just map it, map other points in it as by the homeomorphism. Okay, so 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 this, this is a case where you can actually describe the map sigma, and this is a correct description of the nearby cycles functor, although maybe not the usual one that people will think about. Okay, so 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 we're going to take the constant chief. So so the 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 um, the the, uh, the the Grassmannian Schubert variety that I started with um, is a single orbit. So there's just there's only the constant perverse sheaf on it. Um, it's smooth and it's just a single orbit. So just, you just take the constant sheaf shifted in the appropriate degree. And so uh, I'm taking a perverse, so when I take nearby cycles, I get a perverse sheaf on this broken line. And again, there are these two points, there's points at infinity on both these lines. So it's really P1 union over a point with P1, which are the affine flag variety Schubert varieties corresponding to the two simple reflections in, in the affine file group. Um, so, Okay, so so the, the the first the first attempt to figure out the structure of this is just to look at the local Euler characteristics of the corresponding push forward sheaf, and so I take the constant sheaf on the the, the uh, nearby fiber. When I push it forward, the constant sheaf on the open part just becomes a constant sheaf, and you get Euler characteristic one. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the shifts. It might be I guess it's probably minus one if it's perverted. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat> 
Um, uh, so plus or minus one if, if, if you work out the perverse, sh the, the perverse shifts correctly. Um, but at zero, the fiber over zero is, is homotopic to S1. So it has Euler characteristic zero. And so the, the, the constructible function, the Euler characteristic version of this of the sheaf is just one on the open parts of the two, uh, of the two P1s and zero on, on the intersection. And because it's a perverse sheaf uh, and it's constructible with respect to the orbit, to the, to the Schubert stratification with these three, three strata, that actually is completely enough to tell you what the simple constituents of this perverse sheaf are. Um, in general, for a derived category object, you know, Euler characteristics are no, nowhere near enough, but for perverse sheaves, uh, for perverse sheaves with, with, with contractible strata, this is definitely enough. Um, so what you get a single copy of the uh, IC sheaf on the two open, uh, the two open P1, the, uh, on the two P1s. And there's gonna be, there's gonna have to be two copies of the intersection cohomology sheaf of E uh, and that will subtract off the, these two because they're, uh, the parity of the dimensions is different. And so the perverse shift is going to be one off from, okay, from the other one. So, so, so if, if, these, if these two count as plus one, these will count as minus one or, or vice versa. Um, so yeah, so, so in general, yeah, so, so you can, you can if, you, if you know the Euler characteristics of the IC sheets, and these are smooth, so they're easy, um, you can you can quickly write down what the at least the simple constituents are. Okay, um, so the internal structure turns out to be to be to, to look like this, where you have one of these point sheaves is a sub, one is a quotient, and the two p1 sheaves lie in the middle. Um, and the monodromy, well, it's going to act as the identity on the middle factor because on the open part, the monodromy can't do anything at all. Um, and in fact, on the stalks of this, of this perverse sheaf and the co-stalks of the perverse sheaf, the monodromy can't do anything at all. Um, so that suggests maybe that the monodromy operator is in fact the identity, but it's actually not. On these point sheaves, the monodromy is actually unipotent. It sends, it's, it sends uh, well, if you, subtract, if you subtract the identity, it's gonna send, uh, it's gonna be the unique uh, uh, self map of this that takes this, the sub, uh, take, takes the, um, takes the quotient uh, point sheaf to the sub on the other one. Okay. Um, so Tom, just at that picture, it's maybe a yeah. tiny bit confused. Sorry, uh, wait, there, there were the internal structure picture. So you, that's a composition series of the nearby cycles, yeah? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so so, so th 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 this, represents a, this represents a sub and this represents a quotient, if I got that right, yeah. Um, and the arrows kind of don't have a meaning, no. Or... Well, there's there's a quiver description. You you can you can write these down as some arrows in the quiver description, which I don't want to write down. But but um, yeah. But 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 in the, in this case, yeah, they they represent the layers in the in the in the uh, in the filtration. Um. So okay. So so the stalks and co stalks won't show you the struct the the struct the, won't show you this monodromy operator. And th this this actually shows up. There's a paper by uh, uh, McPherson and Valonen where they try or they describe uh, they try to give quiver descriptions of perverse sheaves using uh, using sort of elementary constructions. And they're, they the first part of the paper they do it, they try to construct it using stalks and co-stalks, and they they sh they prove that you can you can get the isomorphism classes of objects. So I could in fact tell you that this is the correct description of this object. Using just well, not not the Euler characteristic, but the fact that it's that it's that's that's S one at fiber at that point. Um, but I can't describe the the maps. The, the 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 maps are wrong. So you need something better. What you need is an exact functor on uh, at the point uh, that sort of picks up what's happening there. And it turns out what you need is vanishing cycles cohomology, which I don't want to describe too much. But uh, if you take a generic linear function in this case, uh, a plus c in this case. And take sort of a, a Morse a Morse type thing where you take you're taking the cohomology. Well, I'm taking the cohomology of the nearby fiber, but relative to uh, a nearby value of this of this uh, of this Morse function a plus c. It's a stratified Morse function, and you have to you have to pick you have to choose them in the correct order. But if you do that, you'll get two points in the nearby fiber, and the relative cohomology of that is two dimensional, and that corresponds exactly to the two copies of this point sheet. The, then it, it turns out that, the, that this functor applied to the 
uh, IC sheaves of the, of the two P1s is trivial. So you only pick up the, the point constituents. And, uh, and now uh, a nice piece of topology called picard lefschetz theory says that the monodromy acts, it acts trivially on the cohomology of this whole blue thing, but the relative cohomology of this, of this relative to these two points, it's not trivial because, well, now I'm doing a homology picture, but if you take a cycle uh, joining these, a relative cycle joining these two points, when you go around around the origin by mu, it ends up twisting like this, which ends up giving you the 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 this relative cycle added to the the cycle around the around the two. Okay, so so th this actually can be turned into a precise proof that 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 um, unipotent endomorphism is not the identity. Any questions? Okay, so I'm just about out of time, so I'll 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 go sort of quickly through the through the last things. I mean, it's it's um, sort of just upgrading this. So as I said, you can compute multiplicities of simples in this central sheaf by looking at the the Euler characteristic in in each in each orbit, but each orbit contains a unique t fixed point, and so all you really need to, need to do is is trace how the fixed points in GER, or really GER times G mod B, but you only need GER times B mod B. Um, how they how they uh, limit into tick, into t fixed points in, in in the flag variety, and the answer is uh, is you basically so ger t is represented by the quotient uh, the cosets of w by the finite vial group, and what you do is in each case you pick the coset which is sort of most dominant um, in in the in the in the out sort of in, in the alcove picture, um, and then and then. And then that, and then at, at any at any fixed point of the flag variety which is not hit by this by this map, or it's it's actually hit by a different by GER times a different G mod B orbit, but um, but but we're we're only talking about the, the unit orbit in, in G mod B. Um, so you just push forward the, the the Euler characteristic along that map and put zeros everywhere else, and then by that sort of inclusion exclusion you can figure out the constituents. Um, but there's much more sophisticated work by Gertz and Haynes. Which actually take which actually uh, take into account the weight filtration, and so you know wh whereas for the S one I was just going to put or the of zero you really want it to be um, you know a sort of one minus Q or something or some some shift of that maybe a V minus V inverse, um, uh, so uh, that that would be sort of the correct thing and then the heck algebra you could actually get the weight filtration. Uh, on this on this object, but just on the Euler characteristic level, you can you can very naively figure out at least this what the multiplicities of the simple simples in this in this central object. And so um, uh, I'll, I'll I'll stop here. But you but you can you can do a computation. I did did one with a natural representation of SL three, where you start with the uh, it's a p it's a p two. Uh, where the, the fixed points are these three points represented by points, they're representing points in the Grassmannian, and you take the, the um, dominant chambers adjacent to those, uh, put ones on those, and then you try to take the corresponding affine flag variety sheaves, which in this case, they're all smooth, so, so they're, they all have you know, cosmos and polynomial one, so I don't have to worry about it, uh, don't have to work too hard, and you try to, you try to get to this uh, to zeros everywhere but ones here by adding and subtracting uh, various multiplicity mul mul multiplicity copies of of the uh, uh, Schubert uh, of the IC sheaves. Okay, I will stop there. Any questions for Tom? Can I can I ask a question? Uh, yes. So so your functor uh, Z, starting with a simple perverse sheaf, uh, gives you a. Uh, uh, a non-semi-simple object. Uh, yes. So that means somehow there is some uh, uh, additional. So that's probably related to what you maybe related to what you just discussed. Uh, there is some uh, extra structure there. So either the 
I mean, you have a radical filtration or maybe a weight filtration or something like that. Is that something that's uh, completely uh, uh, understood? Uh, well, Roman put some comments that uh, says that at least that, that there's more understood than I know, which is just as monodromy and, and, the, and the monodromy should give you the weight filtration. Um, but uh, but there's a, there's some other there's some other things in the chat. Um, but I, I I don't I no I, I don't know much about these sheaves. And actually, it's been a, it, you know it's been on my list because I love computing for sheaves to sort of look at these in more detail for a long time. But I have had other projects going on. So um, one of the reasons I was happy to give this talk was to spend some time more time thinking about them. But no, I, I don't I don't know much about this about the more detailed structure. Um, other than yeah, looking looking at the papers, which I think will sh show up in some of the future talks, um, there's a filtration by these uh, sheaves called Wakimoto sheaves, which are essentially the categorified versions of the of the actual H lambdas rather than the H lambdas uh, the w, the W invariant version. Um, so 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 in, in this case, there would be um, there would be two uh, filtration by two sheaves in this in in in, in this uh, in. Of, of the of the GL two example that I did, um, what one corresponded to each of the two fixed points essentially. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so if I can comment, so um, yeah, there's a general theorem of uh, Bernstein, Bernstein, and Gaber that um, in this situation when we're taking nearby cycles of a pure uh, weight zero sheave, then the weight filtration coincides with monodromic filtration, meaning well, let's take, so it is unipotent here, let's take log monodromy, and then uh, there is this SL2 sort of style uh, delaying filtration, right? So, uh, if it was, if this unipotent was a part of SL2, then this would be just the filtration by eigenvalues um, of H. And uh, yeah, and uh, well, one thing is relates to is some Lustig's approach to uh, his bijection between cells and uh, important elements uh, in the dual group. So he essentially uh, um, well, uh, yeah, it's probably I won't be able to say it in detail, but you know, he he, he has this homomorphism from a from the H to the asymptotic Hick algebra, and then looking at the powers of Q, kind of decomposing into things uh, according to the powers of Q, which appear there, they kind of correspond to this taking associated grade of weight filtrations. And mm -hmm. so um, do you want to go back to your slide with the um, ICS? I see one more, maybe one more. Can I ask while you're doing that, uh, uh, Roman? So the, in general, the weight filtration will be strictly finer than the radical filtration or not? Um, uh, yes, I, uh, yes, I'm not sure about the radical filtration. I don't know much about that. But, but so there is this, um, mm, a relation to tilting objects and so maybe if something is so maybe one can transport information from there. I think the filtrations will be the same. So you think that weight filtrations and radical filtrations? I, I think you can probably show that there's that if you have something that's in that has no differentials out of it and it's complex. I, I, I would be extremely surprised with it. Maybe they are the same, but yes, I, I, that, that I'm not sure. Uh, Did people understand Roman's SL2 comments about the multiplicities here? Because you can translate, now that this is right in front of you, it's easy to say it in another way, which is just that um, if you look at the multiplicity of ICS0 or ICS1 or ICE, these are SL2 representations. Um, and the monodromy acts, if you, if you ignore the one, or if you take the log, the monodromy acts by the race of operator. All right, so the fact that I like is that if you just take sort of the multiplicity of the 
uh, IC sort of of the point shifts. Well, if Fukushima simple uh, is simply connected, then just the um, multiplicity of IC x zero or x e, right? The point. So it will um, enter as many times as um, the dimension of the corresponding representation of G check and the weight grading there will uh, correspond to the principal sort of grading. So here it's, uh, it enters exactly twice and uh, two weights so corresponds to the two dimensional representations and uh, two dimensional representation of SL2 and uh, but there, but there isn't a corresponding description for the other for uh, away from the identity, right? Or well, it's more complicated, yeah. So, I... do you have one, Roman? No, I'm not sure. I mean, well, uh, Tom talked about this algorithm. I mean, Gertz and Haynes can compute. In principle, in principle yeah. If you um... Well, in the non-grade, so so Tom mentioned this uh, uh, Wakimoto thing, and the, if you forget the grading, then Wakimoto, just the class in the non-graded gross the group, it's just the same as the class of the standard sheaf. Mm -hmm. In yeah. principle, if you just want to know the multiplicity, well, you just uh, um, sum the corresponding classes. Is it so obvious what the multiplicities are in the Wakimoto? If you forget the grading, then well, Wakimoto again. Wakimoto is some rather explicit. There's one some rather explicit element in the affine Hickey algebra. Even if you don't forget, well, you need to know some inverse cosmolytic polynomials and yeah, yeah. Okay, so yes. Yeah. So if you want something more direct, then yes, I'm not sure. I have a comment or two to make. Um, so for. For people, I don't know, there, there may be several people in this audience, people like Tom and people like me. Um, <laughs> for people who like Tom who can do computations in geometry and when want another sort of toy example where you can actually follow the computations. There's this paper of Achar, a writer, uh, which is really nice to read. It's well written. And they do this, the case of the, um, the standard representation of GLN for all N. So, um, Basically, it, it, it turns out that you're taking nearby cycles for a really nice, simple uh, model inside the geometric, uh, inside the, well, basically like what, what he was saying, it's like you take this map from A n to A 1, which takes the product of all the coordinates, x1 comma x2 comma x3 goes to x1 times x2 times x3, um, which is very singular at the origin and at all the coordinate hyperplane, at all the coordinate hyperplanes. And then, and then you sort of do nearby cycles for this around the, the open part. Uh, it's a, they do this computation very explicitly in this Achar Rider paper, and they use this to describe the result um, very explicitly with the monitor map and all that stuff. So it's, that's a nice read for those people who want more geometric practice. Um, if people, on the other hand, for the audience who knows um, Zergel calculus and, and the diagrammatics, um, uh, you can see a lot of examples in my paper, again, for the standard representation of GLN. And maybe we will have a talk by Ben on that uh, in the future. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. If you convince me. Tom, could you say again in your picture of the internal structure what the arrows were? Uh, well, th there's a there. I mean, there, there's a quiver description of of, of perverse sheaves, and, and these would be the non-zero arrows in that in the, in that quiver description. But um, but I, I mean, I mean, more more schematically, it's it's saying that um, the um, I mean, I mean, the, the 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 top copy of ICE is 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 a sub, and the bottom copy is is a quotient. And if you if you um, uh, you know if you if you kill the, if you quotient out by the sub and, and, and take the kernel of the map to the quotient, then, then you get the direct sum of the two other IC sheaves. Um, is it possible to briefly say in terms of uh, geometry what these morphisms were? Uh, in these uh, arrows well, in this quiver description? They're, they're, they're X1s between the corresponding. Symbols. Right, right, okay. Yeah. I mean, the quiver, I, yeah, I mean, I mean, the quiver is gonna look like uh, 
maps going in both directions uh, and relations. Uh, the relations are uh, like going this way and going this way is equal to zero. And, uh, and also going this way and going this way is equal to zero. So, so, so that, I mean, the, 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 the yeah, the, the actual quiver you get is something like uh, Q direct sum Q, 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 and then sort of include and project, but include and project on the, on sort of other factors. So that, that that's the, the biggest non semi, the, 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 the biggest indecomposable logic you can construct in this, in this, uh, in this quiver category. Great. Thank you. So maybe I can make a couple of comments so that I usually make about the shifts. So uh, first, uh, well, there's this remarkable property that uh, convolution with this uh, central shift preserves perverse shifts, right? And uh, you can ask, say, for fine dimensional situation for G mod B, if there is, if there are shifts like that, and then you can actually prove that the, um, the shift on G mod B has this property if and only if it is tilting. Mm -hmm. and so on a fine flat variety are also you know, perfectly well defined tilting shifts, which also have this property, but for some reason uh, the if direction still works in the fine setting, but the only if doesn't. So there are there are more. So, so, so central shifts would give an example of non-tilting convolution exact things. Uh, but they, yeah, so they share some other properties of tiltings. Um, so I don't know, maybe that will be discussed later, but um, uh, but so, uh, well, another thing is, uh, uh, well, Im important story about uh, Shifts on flag varieties is causal duality and tiltings are causal dual to, um, well, irreducibles or um, more general. Well, yeah, so in, in, in <clears throat> characteristic zeros add into irreducibles. Uh, and uh, so this um, causal duality for a fine flag variety was in particular constructed in paper with Yoon, but. Um, it should be true that these central shifts are causal self dual, but uh, it, there's no doubt this works out, but it, I don't think anybody checked it. Mackie and I checked it in very easy cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But not, not, not in general, right? Sometimes. You didn't, right? But that, yeah, motivates again. So, 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 um, if you believe this, that motivates some um, tilting-like property of um, the central shift. So somehow, if you, uh, as Tom mentioned, if you push forward these things to find Grassmannian, you get back the irreducible spherical shift. But the uh, dual property, which is known, is that if you Project this to anti spherical category that's uh, been discussed in other talks, then you'll get a tilting shift. And one can uh, use this to give an elementary construction like uh, non using, using um, uh, deformation on nearby cycles. So the shifts themselves can be constructed to this elementary way using on the tilting shifts, but uh, I don't know how to choose, check their properties that way. That's, maybe. That's awesome. I didn't know that stuff about tilting. That's great. So if, as far as I understand, like this construction can be done with deeper level structure as well. I, I wonder if what is known about doing that. Well, that's I think a great, uh, great question, but uh, Formally, I think it. Um, so, so uh, you, one can define the objects and even the functors, but 
one can't prove anything about them. Uh, one does not get a monoidal functor from, for example, from the spherical category uh, or an action for, for it sort of appears that it happens for a technical reason because uh, well Tom didn't explain maybe the proof but it's based on um, so, uh, deformation for the convolution diagram and then at some point you need to use that uh, push forward commutes with nearby cycles and that requires properness. Mm -hmm. So flag variety is uh, improper, but if uh, um, uh, but if you do add further level structure, consider generalized flag variety, then it's no longer improper, and the convolution diagram is not improper. But yeah, so I uh, I think you know it should work sometimes, but we can discuss it. Uh, is the answer expected to be still central in these deeper things, like the result of this operation? No, that also, I mean, all, all these properties require it. So you know, this whole, this package that, you know, you get an action, you get a monoidal functor from uh, like the Sataki category and it's uh, central. This is all proved together by the, I mean, you need different degenerations, but in each case, you use this commutation with push forward. You're, so you're saying without the properness, you wouldn't be able to prove it? Yeah, without the properness. The only thing that one can define is just a functor for every, for every object in the stack you can define a functor. That exists. But. So I think it should work kind of nicely on some, on certain objects, but we can discuss it. So now that we're just chatting, maybe I'll say it aloud. Um, what everything that I understand about affine Grassmannians and affine five varieties, I just replace them with the Katz Moody, affine Katz Moody five varieties and affine Katz Moody partial five varieties. What do these higher level things correspond to? Do they correspond to something in that setting? Yeah, just well, you can think about it as Katz Moody, but you know. For you find a dimensional group, you can consider like flag variety, but you can consider like what's called base affine space, G mod U or, or G itself or something like this. So here also you can take like, over the flag variety, you can take you know, T bundle or some further things. So I think if you just uh, if you just uh, um, take the uh, T bundle and work with monodromic shifts, then I think it still works pretty much the same way. But it's I mean, and it's even somewhat documented. Sporadic statements to that effect in the literature, but that that, that, that should be okay. But. But even in that setting, if you don't restrict to monodromic, it doesn't, it doesn't work out. Any more questions for Tom? If not, let's thank him again. <laughs>